Hello, I'm joined today by Dr. Gwilym Roddick, a licensed clinical social worker and proud ABCT member. Dr. Roddick received his master's degree from Columbia University and his doctor of social work degree from Rutgers University. Dr. Roddick specializes in delivering CBT and ACT for anxiety disorders and substance use disorders. In addition to his practice at the Ross Center in New York City, Dr. Roddick provides psychotherapy to post 9-11 veterans through the nonprofit Headstrong Project. He also trains and supervises psychologists and psychotherapists, and he never shies away from sharing professional mentorship and advice to prospective social workers, as is the focus of today's interview. Dr. Roddick, thank you so much for joining me to talk about careers in professional training and social work. Oh, thank you for having me. It's uh, something I enjoy doing. <laughs> so to get us started, could you share how and why you entered the field of social work generally and clinical social work specifically? <laughs> Sure. So I uh, actually had a previous career. I worked in the arts. I worked in film production and as an actor, and that was my bachelor's uh, background education. in. Um, and working in an industry for several years, I found myself very unhappy and not living up to kind of my potential and my values. So I thought about becoming a couple of different things. I thought about becoming a teacher or a therapist, something in a, a helping profession where I could be of service. Um, so I talked with some people about how you become a therapist. And several people said to me, well, if you don't have a psych background and you, uh, you know, haven't uh, studied for, uh, you know, intensely for the GRE and you aren't necessarily sure you want to commit to like a five-year program, uh, like a PhD or a PsyD, which also would be very, not just time consuming, but costly, you could get an MSW a master's in social work and you could become a therapist that way and if you like it you can always go back to school um, and further your education or you can just stay as a, a licensed clinical social worker this is something i hadn't heard about um, i always assumed most uh, therapists were uh, phds um, or even some psychiatrists that did therapy so um, yeah, so I just kind of fell into it and I luckily had some very helpful people, which is why I like to pay it forward, who spoke with me about what being a social worker entailed, what some of the education entailed and how they love the field and, and thought I might be a good fit for it. That's great that you had those sort of experienced mentors who were able to kind of share that information and background with you. So generally speaking, how does a master's in social work program in the United States at least differ from other programs and related disciplines like clinical psychology or mental health counseling? So um, the field of social work has been around for quite a long time. In terms of social workers being therapists, that is something that I believe started in the 60s and 70s when people could get clinical training in psychotherapy. The difference primarily, I think, between social work program and a PhD in psychology or a PsyD program um, is that the focus, uh, social work has many different, uh, uh, many different uh, places, uh, positions people can work in. It has not just you become a, psych uh, a therapist or you become a professor or you do research. Social workers are in a variety of different settings. They work in hospitals, they work in group homes, they work in uh, case management, they work with seniors, they work with uh, a lot more, I think, diverse populations, generally those who are um, oppressed and marginalized. They work in schools. Uh, a lot of them work with kids um, and, uh, and in different capacities. So the main kind of uh, professional values of social work involve um, a person in an environment as opposed to a diagnosis, getting the whole person's experience versus focusing on pathology and really trying to see all the factors that influence a person's experience versus a diagnosis. So I think that's a significant difference. Also, the kind of courses that you take in a social work program are human behavior in the social environment. You take a policy course because we learn how systems in, uh, influence people's behaviors, uh, political systems, government systems, uh, culture and context influences what people experience. So when someone comes into your office, you're trying to look at a much broader picture of what they're coming in with 
than simply, oh, your thinking falls along the lines of this is depression and this is how I'd like to help you with this. And I don't, I don't, that's one thing that I've learned is different from different programs, but I also think based on your placements, your supervisors, your training in PhD programs, in PsyD programs, you're going to get some of that as well. I just think there's a heavy focus on it. And many people who go to social work schools do not want to become therapists. Um, and so then um, for those who are um, maybe kind of oriented toward a, a clinically focused career, what sort of clinical training is involved during graduate school or are there internships? Um, could you speak to, to that a bit? So yeah, in, in the social work program is generally two years full time or three years part time. A lot of people actually go to social work school part time because they're working in another job. And some people go actually a lot of people who go to social work school go back uh, later in life. So after they've had a career, after they've had children, um, even as a second career. Um, but I'd say the majority of students are primarily right at undergrad or in their early to mid 20s. Maybe they've done some things in between. But in the a social work program full time is two years. And within the first six weeks of your program, you're going to be placed in a placement. Okay. And it isn't something that you get to choose. It's based on primarily where you are, where you live, what the need is, and what potentially the placement is looking for. You can give sort of a, a, a survey questionnaire about what you're into, but you may not get placed at all with something that you're actually interested in doing. So for example, one of my good friends who I went to MSW program with, who ended up getting a job, uh, a PhD at Princeton, and then teaches at the Jane Addams School of Social Work, he wanted to be in policy, but they placed him in a school with kids. And uh, in, in, in the South Bronx. Uh, so he did that work and he learned things, but that wasn't his ultimate goal. And then his second year placement was with, was with a professor during research and it, had a, uh, it didn't have a clinical component. My first year placement, for example, was in a community health center where I was doing some case management work, some intervention work, some uh, just, you know, brief referral assessment and referral work to outside providers within the community health center in an adult medicine unit and in a child and adolescent unit. I also did some HIV pre and post test counseling for people who are coming in who were who are pregnant women um, and people who just wanted to test and what that involved. So in my second year placement was a clinical placement where I was learning from other therapists and clinicians how to do psychotherapy and, um, and, and, and therapy techniques and being supervised. So, um, but again, it varies. Some people might get placed in a school two years because that's what they really want to do. Some people might get placed in a hospital. Uh, at Columbia, they had an intensive DBT program that you had to apply to um, where you um, had to, uh, literally they took like six students and Andre Ivanov was head of it at the time. She was the head of behavioral tech and uh, they had specific design placements for six students to go and be heavily trained and supervised in DBT, and they would leave graduate school with a certification. But that was not the norm. It sounds like there's some variability, which can maybe be to the point disappointing to some folks who have a really specific interest already, but could be really beneficial to folks in kind of exploring their areas or applications they may not have considered otherwise. It's kind of like a, it depends sort of answer as far as uh, fit. Absolutely. And, and I would say one other thing about the two year program, uh, which, which I didn't hint to is, so you'll start a placement your first year, you'll do that for a year, and that'll be three days a week full time. Um, if you do the part-time programs, they kind of make it work for you uh, doing it over the course of three years. Um, but you need to do two years or, or nine months of two years, uh, uh, two placements. Um, if you choose, they have different tracks of social work. They have something, at least at Columbia, they had a, they had a clinical track. They had a policy track. They had an advanced generalist practice and programming track, which didn't include as many clinical courses as the clinical track because a lot of people who took that track wanted to be managers, directors, start non for profits, work in organizations and not a full clinical capacity. So they didn't want to take all those extra clinical courses. Most of the courses in social work school are um, at least the elective courses are introductory. So you will take one course one semester on groups. Okay. 
they, because the program is so short, they don't have the time or, or, or um, uh, the, the resources to give people the type of supervision and advanced training they would in a PsyD or a PhD program. So you will get an introduction to a lot of things you might then seek out um, in post-master's training, which is what I did. Um, I went to several different uh, uh, institutes. I had supervisors who were experts in the field. Um, I did studying on my own. Um, and you know, you, you also just learn by doing. So, um, and, and, and having peer supervision and all those things. So it's, it's different, um, I think, than, than some of the intensity of the clinical training you'll get. Um, you might take a course or two on families, but then of course you need more work on families. And I know PhD and PsyD programs can also be sort of introductions and you might specialize later, but sometimes I think you can get a supervisor or a uh, person who's supervising your dissertation who is more focused on the thing that you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I have a friend who, who has, the, he's a geropsychologist psychologist and he just kind of fell into that. So you've mentioned placements, you've mentioned some um, foundational introductory courses. Are there any other program milestones that are common to social work programs? Um, let me just see. So different programs at different schools have different uh, what they call uh, like sort of capstone or thesis mm -hmm. projects. So some have theses that you need to finish. At Columbia, we had a group capstone project where we did like an interdisciplinary sort of like coming from different angles, intervention on a specific case. It was almost like a case study and how we would look at this from a policy perspective, a, a, a sort of a micro, meso and macro perspective how we would all influence this. And we created a group project based on that. And then we kind of presented these group projects and to be evaluated by the faculty. Um, I'm not sure they're still doing it that way. I know people years ago in social work programs had theses. Um, you don't have a dissertation. Um, there's just not enough time. Um, um, also, it's a master's level degree. And that's something different also to talk about is that a social work master's level degree is the terminal degree for the social work profession. It, you can go back to school as I did, and I'll talk about that in a minute, for a PhD or a, a DSW, a doctorate in social work. However, you don't need to. We're not, the social work field still maintains that the terminal degree is a master's. It might change over time, but um, they just, uh, and there are some reasons also why a social work program is two years. Um, it's expensive, it's time consuming, and though they'd love to have it as a three or four year degree, it, it just a lot of people who work in the social work field can't afford the time, the energy, the commitment to do that. And again, they need a lot of social workers in this country to do a lot of different jobs and hold a lot of different functions. Mm -hmm. So what does postgraduate um, supervised experience toward clinical licensure look like? Is there a, a period before you, you get licensure? Yes. So when you finish your uh, graduate degree, you can take what's called your LMSW, your first um, post-master's test. And you take that exam and it's a similar exam to what you'll take for your clinical test. So most people take it um, pretty quickly. And if they want to get start working on their clinical license, some people never get it. Um, I think Brene Brown is an LMSW. She went back and got a PhD. And she does fantastic research and she, you know, is amazing, but she didn't get a full clinical social work license. And her PhD, by the way, is in social work as well. Um, I should also say social workers are the majority of therapists and counselors in the country. Um, and it's also, um, uh, it's, it's uh, I'm just trying to think. Yeah, because if you look at uh, demographically, not all places have providers. And in New York, for example, in New York City, Historically, a lot of the therapists have been social workers, not always PhDs and PsyDs. And uh, to be honest with you, the pay level can be the same depending on your specialty. So I, I mean, I'm on the pay level the same as PhDs I work with, but that's just because of my specific training, my niche and my background. Um, so uh, where was I going a second ago that, um, oh, post-master's training. So you take your first uh, LMSW test and uh, it's multiple choice and it has, you know, like a lot of licensing exams, you may come out of it thinking, what was that about? Do it, did I pass? But a lot of it is about making sure that you do no harm to people, okay? And that you know 
foundational things. It's not necessarily theory focused yet. And even the clinical licensing exam isn't, you know, you don't need to know everything about CBT. You don't need to know everything about psychoanalytic and psychodynamic therapy. You need to know some things, but not, uh, you don't need to be perfect at them. I actually don't know what it's like to take a, a PsyD or a PhD clinical exam, licensing exam. So in New York, Different states have different um, criteria for getting your clinical exam. In New York State, you have to do it within three to six years. You can't do it sooner than three, and you need to complete 2,000 client contact hours and 100 hours of supervision by a person that you're registered to be supervised under. You can't just do it on your own. They need to monitor you and, and make sure you're doing it and then sign off on your hours at the end. I believe PhD and PsyDs also have to do something like a thousand hours and, and be, you know, supervised and it's documented in some way. Um, it's hard sometimes in social work to find a job postgraduate school that will give you that type of supervision and training that you're looking for. So what I tell a lot of people is if you're not getting it, there are providers, for example, in New York City who do CBT training and supervision while someone works at a college counseling center or at a group home where they may not be getting that, but they wanna to work towards their clinical license. Some providers are willing to do that. Sometimes you will get a licensed clinical social worker who will supervise you for your hours. Um, and again, some people don't do it right away. Some people never do it. Um, but um, yeah, if you wanna become a therapist, you need to get your clinical license uh, to be able to uh, you know, not uh, work with people under the supervision of an organization and, a, and another provider. But in social work, they do have some flexibility. It can be not only a social work that you're supervised under, it can be a psychologist or a psychiatrist. Okay. So, so, yeah. Okay, so, and you hinted earlier that not every social work graduate enters a clinically focused career. So um, maybe you could just touch on if that's the clinical path towards licensure, what are just maybe some typical non-clinically focused social work careers? Okay, yeah, absolutely. So uh, like I said, one of my classmates went on to do policy research uh, to see how systems influenced, uh, uh, he got his PhD in sociology. So he wanted to, but he teaches in a social work school and he does research on people in prisons and how um, uh, poverty uh, uh, affects uh, educational outcomes. So he, he's looking at it from that perspective. Uh, another one of my peers uh, works, works in a school and just stayed working in the school. Um, I'm trying to think of some of the other people um, who I work with. Some people just uh, become uh, faculty, they teach social work, but they've had a career in doing other things. Um, I had a peer who ran a group home for women who were um, recovering from substance use, but new mothers. Um, I'm trying to think of some of my other peers. You mentioned non-for-profits too, so maybe some non sort of- Non-for-profits, running organizations, um, hospitals. I think a former head of one of the major hospitals in New York City was a social worker. I don't even think he had his clinical license, but he was the head of a hospital. Um, running other types of non-for-profits. Um, so yeah, it, it kind of varies. Um, I, I wish I could list all of them, but if you Google sometimes some of the jobs that social workers do, uh, again, I, I think some of the main ones are counseling intervention, schools, uh, geriatric, elderly work, um, veterans is a huge one, LGBTQ populations, um, whether it be counseling policy or um, running non for profits so. And so for those uh, who might be viewing this later and they're thinking, no, I think social work is, is the path for me. Uh, are there any kind of general or major considerations you would recommend um, for those folks pursuing social work over some of these other disciplines? Well, what I tell people is, is, is you have to think about um, ultimately what your goal is. So if your goal is to become a therapist, right, you have different paths and sort of hurdles or milestones to get through to get that degree. And are you, are you wanting to do it uh, in a, you know, in a committed five-year program? Are you willing to do it in a two-year program and then do the postmaster's training and supervision? So that's a consideration. Um, you have to consider also that the uh, starting salaries for social workers are much less than they are for PsyDs and PhDs, um, but eventually they can be about the same, if not the same. 
Um, I would also say that looking at social work values and how they approach working with people is a factor in or could be a factor in your decision making. So if you have a very, um, I don't want to say because I mean I know I, I know and work with psychologists and, and psychiatrists who think the same way I do. Um, if you're interested in working with vulnerable, marginalized, impressed populations, and also uh, taking a broader perspective into the human experience, then I would say because social work involves sociology, I would say looking at that if that's important to you. Um, and if you really want to be a counselor and you, again, you want to learn techniques and um, you want to learn how to become a therapist and you don't want to look at uh, privilege and, and things like that, then you, know, you might want to look at like a licensed mental health counselor degree if you want a two-year program. Because so I think, yeah, mm -hmm. and kind of thinking what you're saying, it's you know there's no one activity or value or focus that any discipline has exclusively. It seems to be more about the relative emphasis within maybe these disciplines or programs. And so if some of these features you're talking about are of particular importance, then you might be really well suited to a social work path as opposed to maybe some other sort of program training. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and yeah, and I think it just comes from, again, also where you're at in your stage of life, the cost, the commitment, your background. Again, I didn't have a, a psych background. So it was easier for me to get into a social work program than to take the time to study for the jury, then apply, then make this you know big commitment potentially to move and do this and that. It was like, I wanted to be back in New York. I used to live in LA. Uh, if it was, you know, Columbia and NYU, I applied, I got into both, and then it was just a choice. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, so some of those practical considerations too then. And so mm -hmm. um, in terms of those practicalities of, of applying, say someone wants to begin that process of looking for mm -hmm. social work programs, like what advice would you give them about maybe just the general approach or specific, um, you know, suggestions? Okay, so I would say, um, you know, there are fantastic also, um, like Rutgers, where I went for my for my doctorate in social work, is one of the best social work schools in the country. And I'm not saying that because I went there. I'm saying it because it's a state school. So, and Hunter College uh, School of Social Work is one of the oldest and best schools of social work in the country. Um, that's in New York City. Um, so there are so many social work programs uh, in, in so many different states. And it's not like you have to go to necessarily a, you need to move to another city, you need to do X, Y, and Z to, uh, to get into a program. Most social work programs do not require the GRE, okay? It can help you if you take it and apply, but it's not necessarily required um, at all schools. Um, again, cost, you know, NYU, Columbia, uh, schools I was looking at were private institutions. Um, you know, uh, the cost for state schools and, and city schools is much cheaper. Um, the flexibility, whether you're working or not, is a factor. Um, I would say in terms of applying, they're looking for a couple things. They're looking for people um, who have some sort of volunteer or being of service experience. They're looking for people who have a personal interest in the field that they can talk about um, almost in a narrative way, like, why do you want to do this? Like, what, what, what interests you in this field? Um, and they're looking for people who, um, it, again, you don't necessarily have to have a psych or sociology background. I would say the majority of my classmates had bachelors in psychology, sociology, um, political science. Uh, uh, let me see. Some even, I think, had some uh, early childhood uh, education bachelors. There is a bachelor in social work uh, degree. And if you get your master's, it's only one year versus two years. So some people know they want to be a social worker right away, and they get their bachelor's and then their master's very quickly. Okay. And then um, if someone wants to pursue a DSW, a doctorate in social work, are there additional considerations on top of what you described for master's level programs? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, for the, the PhD and the doctorate in social work programs, 
generally they require you to be in the field for a couple of years. Uh, there can be exceptions to that. Uh, for the DSW, they want you to have your clinical license. So you need to be in the field at least practicing in New York for three years. I know, for example, in other states, it could be two years. Um, and I think that's helpful for when you go back to a doctorate, uh, doctorate in social work program, at least, because you're going to be writing about your experience in the field. You're going to need some experience in the field to know what it is that you want to focus on in terms of your topics for your dissertation. Or, um, for example, in my program, it was a, a case study, a publishable case study and a qualitative research paper, not a quantitative one. Um, plus a multimedia presentation. So you can take your work and transition it to uh, how to disseminate what you, what you have learned, what you know, in a way that's very uh, presentable and uh, it's gonna be perceived and uh, accepted by, by the populations and how to disseminate that. Um, so I would say uh, the reason to go back to get a doctorate in social work could be personal interest, could be uh, that you just wanted to learn more. Okay, there are different programs. For example, my one at Rutgers had, again, a qualitative research and a case study focus. I believe ones at other schools do actually have clinical courses on CBT, on psychodynamic therapy, on couples therapy. So it is maybe more like a PsyD program. Uh, the DSW in itself is coming back as a degree. It kind of phased out in the 70s and, and if not 80s for people who were getting a PhD. And now it's a practice focused doctorate like a PsyD. Um, so it's, it's just coming back. Only a few programs in the country have a DSW. Um, I think there are gonna be more and more who have them. And uh, let me see, a PhD is more focused on becoming a professor in social work and doing social work research. Well, this is incredibly helpful and I can only imagine how many people will be viewing this later and really appreciating having you bring this discipline to life, a primer at least. And before we close out, are there any other pieces of advice or a counsel or anything else you'd want to share with people who are watching this? Yeah, I would just say, you know, if you can find some social workers to talk to about what they do, their path, I think making an informed enough decision about what step you want to take is good. Um, again, I fell into social work because it was a second career for me. Uh, I knew some people who were doing it. I'm really grateful I did because I really thought that becoming a therapist was uh, in a way kind of a medicalized profession. And you would work with people and you would call them patients. And in social work, we call them clients. And you would uh, come in and like work with someone and help them. And then that would, you know, that would be it. Um, but I can't tell you how much my social work training has influenced what I do, even though it was not necessarily clinic, it was clinically focused, but not in the way that I thought it would be. Um, also, I just have to acknowledge that um, you know, I don't, I don't speak for the whole social work profession. And to be honest with you, I'm, I'm, you know, a, a cisgendered uh, white male. And um, I feel that, you know, uh, the majority of the people in the social profession are women. They probably can, can, can speak to different things that I can. Um, and, you know, it's, it's what I like about the social work field is you're constantly learning. It never, it never stops. And um, it just, it really did align with my values as a person and, and being of service. And I still, you know, for example, I work in a private practice right now and I have a pretty considerable fee, um, but I work with some veterans through a non for profit And I don't think I'll ever not work with people who can't access my services, not out of guilt or anything, but because of what I've, I've learned in social work school. And um, I also see one client generally pro bono, you know, and I know psychologists and, and, and psychiatrists do the same thing if they, if they work with someone they care about, but just, I wanted to be invested in certain communities that I know we're not going to get access, uh, based on what I'd seen. And it was just, it was just, you know, a, a value I have of fairness and of, of, of being of service and, and being grateful for what I know and, and sharing that. So. 
Um, yeah, I would say that um, I'm, I'm super grateful to be a social worker. Um, and though I call myself a psychotherapist, I am a clinical social worker. And, um, you know, I, I have learned so much also from my peers in the field who have opened my eyes to my own personal experience in this country and the world that um, it's just helped me grow and develop as a, as a human being in, in a way I couldn't have anticipated. Well, thank you so much for making time to share your experiences with ABCT and all the service that you do for ABCT and just more broadly speaking. Uh, we look forward to seeing what you do in the future and thank you again for your time. Of course, thank you, Shannon.